Welcome to the Free Pilot Training Channel, where today we're going to be explaining latitude and longitude. Just sit back and relax, because we're going to do some studying for that private pilot written exam. Pilots need to be able to identify their position on the globe, and one way we can do that is by using latitude and longitude. Just as you may remember from your high school geography class, lines of latitude and longitude are imaginary lines drawn on a globe so we can help identify our position. Lines of latitude run laterally across the globe and start with the equator at zero degrees. And the equator divides our globe into two equal segments, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. From the equator, these lines run north until they reach the top of the earth at 90 degrees north. These lines also run south until they hit the bottom of the globe at 90 degrees south. One important thing for you to remember is that lines of latitude are parallel with the equator. Lines of longitude, which are the red ones you see here, run perpendicular to the equator. These start on the prime meridian, which runs through Greenwich, England, at zero degrees. Then they end at 180 degrees, which is roughly on the international date line. When you travel west from the prime meridian, not only are you in the western hemisphere, but you can see that these lines of longitude actually bear a westerly label. And of course, the opposite is also true if you travel east of the prime meridian. Now, between every degree of latitude and longitude, we break these up into minutes. And there are 60 minutes in between every degree of latitude and longitude. And every one of these minutes equals one nautical mile. That's why we use nautical miles instead of statute miles in a lot of aviation calculations. These minutes of latitude and longitude, or increments of one nautical mile, can be further divided into seconds. And just like time, there are 60 seconds in one minute of latitude and longitude. And because minutes and seconds are in increments of 60, most aviation calculations follow the 60 to 1 rule. Incidentally, that's how the old whiz wheel flight computers work. If you're like me, when you first saw how one of these worked, you probably thought it fell out of a flying saucer. Anyways, before we get too distracted, let's take a look at how we write out these latitudes and longitudes. We also call these coordinates. First, this N lets us know that we're in the northern hemisphere. Then, this 32 lets us know that we're 32 degrees north of the equator. Now, if you remember from earlier, every degree has 60 minutes in it. And every minute equals one nautical mile. So we can take this number and multiply it times 60 to get our distance from the equator. So at 32 degrees north, or 1,920 nautical miles from the equator. But not so fast, we've still got some numbers left over. This next set of numbers indicates our minutes, so we can just add this to our total distance from the equator. And this gives us a total distance of 1,962 nautical miles. Now this last line indicates our seconds. We've got 12 seconds here. That means 12 sixtieths of a nautical mile. And if you do the math, that's 0.2 nautical miles. That means we're exactly 1,962.2 nautical miles north of the equator. Now the longitudes, those work the same way. Let's calculate this one real quick. First, we're in the western hemisphere. Then you can see that we're 91 degrees west of the prime meridian. So if we multiply 91 times 60, you can see that we're 5,460 nautical miles west of the prime meridian. Now, let's go ahead and add our minutes here. Remember, one minute equals one nautical mile, so let's go ahead and add 21 nautical miles to get 5,481 nautical miles west of the prime meridian. Now let's attack these seconds. We've got 15 seconds, that means 15 sixtieths of a nautical mile. And this translates to 0.25, so let's just add this to our total to get 5,481.25 nautical miles. Now you can start to see how we can use these latitudes and longitudes to give someone our exact position on the globe. Next, let's pull out a VFR sectional and I'll show you how the FAA is going to ask these questions on your written exam. The first question you might see on the test is something like this. What are the coordinates for Libby Airport? Well, as you can see, it's right here, but what are the coordinates? Now right away, you probably already picked out the lines of latitude and the lines of longitude. And as you can see, they're pretty obviously labeled here. But what makes this confusing is that some of these lines of latitude and longitude don't have labels, so you might not be sure what the scale is. On VFR sectionals, these unmarked lines of latitude and longitude are actually our 30-minute markers. 
This means that every other lat long marking that you see indicates one degree of change. Now if we zoom in even closer you can see that even the individual minutes are marked on these VFR sectionals. Don't forget these are one nautical mile. Then this bigger hash mark indicates 10 minutes. Once we know this, let's look at the question again. What are the coordinates for Libby Airport? First of all, it's pretty obvious that we're in the northern hemisphere, so let's put an N here. Second, Libby is north of the 48th parallel, so let's put a 48 here. To figure out how much, we might have to zoom in a little bit. All we have to do is count these tick marks. I'm getting about 17, so let's add 17 minutes to our latitude. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks to be dead on that mark, so I'm not going to add any seconds here. And the answers on the test shouldn't only differentiate by seconds anyways. Now that we've found our latitude, let's find our longitude. We know we're in the western hemisphere because these numbers count up as we travel west. And now if you notice here, this longitude just prior to Libby is 115 degrees. So now, let's get our minutes. You know, to me, it looks like this is one minute shy of the 30 minute marker, so let's call this 29 minutes. And that's all we have to do to come up with coordinates for a specific location. Let's look at one more way they may ask you this question. What is in the following location? Well right away, when I look at these coordinates, I know it's beneath the 47th parallel here. And that's because these coordinates are showing north of the 46th parallel. In fact, it looks like we're only 2 minutes and 36 seconds short of the 47th parallel. Now, right away when I'm drawing my line on this map, I'm wondering if it's one of these two airports right here. It could even be this town of Lincoln. Our longitude is showing 112 degrees and 44 minutes, so we know we're east of this mark. Here's 112 and 30 minutes. Here's 112 and 40 minutes. Then this one is 112 and 44 minutes. Now we'll take a quick look at our seconds here. We've got 45 seconds, which means 45 sixtieths of a nautical mile. And that's 0.75 nautical miles. So now that we've triangulated our position, it looks to me like Cane Ranch Airport is the answer to this question. Hey, I hope you learned something today. If you did, please hit that like button for me before you go see what other videos I have available. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You'll thank yourself when you go to take your written or your check ride. I'll see you next time.